I'm Field and Stream Rut Reporter Scott Bestel. You know, it's early October and bucks are starting to get more active. They're making rubs, laying down scrapes, and some are even checking out does. But before we get really aggressive with our hunting tactics in these weeks leading up to the rut, we need to understand how wind behaves on each of our properties. You know, it's easy to forget that wind behaves a lot like water. Instead of blowing consistently in one direction, Anytime wind hits a major change in topography or even a block of cover, it starts acting in funky ways that can really hurt us. Fortunately, with a little extra work, we can master the wind on any property we hunt by creating a living wind map. Here's how I do it on this typical hunting farm. I'd like to start here on this west edge of the field, which is relatively flat and there's nothing around to influence wind direction. Stand at this spot write down the prevailing wind in a notebook. The next step is to start visiting different spots on the property, like this stand of open hardwoods on the north edge of the field, and compare the wind direction there to the prevailing wind at your baseline point. Then, just continue visiting different spots on your property where a major change in topography or cover could influence the wind direction. Some of the spots that stand out on this farm are the steep hillside on the northeast corner, the long ditch that runs off of that hill into the corner of this field, and these densely timbered bottoms along the creek. But don't forget even little funky spots like the barn where a deer might bed or even pass by on his way to the feed in the field. After you've visited all these areas and noted the wind direction, you can write them on a topo map or aerial photo. Repeat this procedure for the two or three major wind directions that your area experiences each fall, and soon you'll have a living wind map that will help you make smart hunting decisions in the weeks ahead.